This is HRW911P066. Um, it says in the figure below, a small mass slides down a frictionless surface through a certain height and then sticks to a uniform rod, uh, gives you mass and length. The rod then pivots about a point O through an angle theta before momentarily stopping. Find theta. So this might look familiar. It is similar to that problem we did where you uh, had a bullet hitting a block on the end of a string or something and then you had to find how high it went. Um, that would work except for the fact that in those problems it was always some massless rod that the block was on. This is not massless. Uh, it has mass, 55 kilograms worth, and it even has in it Oh, I'm sorry, that's the block. It's 110 grams. That's, that's a fair amount. That's not massless. So instead, we have to deal with angular momentum. And it has to be angular momentum because this thing rotates. Okay? Um, the, I, the general overview is we're going to try and find out how fast was this block moving when it hit the rod by using energy conservation principles. Um, turn that into an angular momentum as if this block was rotating around. And then that's going to collide. During the collision you're going to lose energy, but you will not lose momentum. So we'll be able to find the velocity of the rod block system just after impact from conservation of momentum, and then, then we'll be able to use that uh, to find the energy just after impact, and then when that energy gets up to a certain height again, uh, it'll all be potential, and then we won't be moving anymore and that's what will stop. Okay, so first step is let's find out how fast that block was moving before right before it hits the rod. Okay. So when it started, it started from rest at a height of twenty centimeters. Sorry I have hiccups now too. So when it was up there it had energy, it was just potential energy. So basically the energy we started with was MGH. Okay, that then, when that fell, all of the potential went away and it all turned into kinetic. So when that comes to the bottom, that'll be one half m v squared. Okay, notice m's cancel. So v squared is, let's see, times 2, 2 g h. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Alrighty. So, when this is about to hit the rod, its velocity is the square root of 2gh. Okie dokie. Alright, now, I need to know not, not what v is, but what omega is, because I'm going to use this in a rotational equation. So I know that omega, in general, is v over r. So in this case, um, r is the distance from the pivot point, so that's the length of the rod. I'm just going to call that L. Okay, So basically what we have is V over L, or since V is two, square root of 2GH, what we have is square root of 2GH over L. Alrighty then. So the rotational momentum of this block thingy when it's about to hit the rod is, well, it's always I omega. Um, the block is being treated like a particle, which in that it, in which case that would be m r squared um, times omega. In this case, r is L, m is m, so we're just going to leave it. So we end up with m L squared times 2gh over L. So we are going to lose 1L. That's okay. We end up with the um, angular momentum of the bullet ends up being ML times the square root of 2gh. Okie dokie. Now, right before that block hits the rod, that is the only angular momentum that exists because the rod is not moving. So that is actually the total angular momentum. However, after we hit the rod, after we hit the rod, the total angular momentum is the momentum of the block and the rod. Okay, block and the rod. 
So we have to add those together. Okay, the block um, will again be what is that? M L squared for the I times omega. New omega this time. We don't know what that is, but we'll find out. That's what we're looking for. And then the rod, well, this rod is a rod pivoting around its end point, not its center of mass. So I for that is one third, I'm going to use capital M, L squared, and then the, so that's I, and then it's also moving at some omega. Same omega, we don't know what it is, but we'll find out. Okay. Now LT, remember from up here, was mass of the block times L times the square root of 2GH. So I'm replacing that with this, and then that's going to equal ML squared omega. And actually, I'm going to factor out the omega. So when I factor out the omega, this is what I'll get, like that, OK? And then I would divide both sides by this chunk here, and then that would give me omega. OK, omega equals, um, ooh, I'm running out of room, aren't I? ML square root 2GH over ML squared. Oh, notice the L's are going to go away. That's nice. Yeah. There's an L in this term and an L in each of these terms. So actually, L on top goes away and these become not squared. Yeah. Okay. By the way, if you check, as long as it's like as we go along, I'm just checking. Um, I know little m, I know g, I know h, I know little m, I know l, I know big M, I know l. So everything on the right hand side is known. I could get a number for this. I am just avoiding numbers because then I get rounding errors. And you know what? Um, this is getting really large and annoying, so I'm going to go ahead and put numbers in and get a number for this. Okay, so when I put all my good numbers that are mine in here and I throw it through the calculator, what I get is, um, okay, I got, I got 2.9698, blah, 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 blah. Um, I sure hope that's right, because I threw it all in the calculator at once. We'll see, I guess. 9698. It keeps going, but I'm going to stop there. Okay, so that is the rotational velocity of the rod bullet, like, or sorry, not rod and bullet, but the rod block, like, combination right after impact. So, like, right here, when it starts, when it's rotating, starts to rotate, um, that's how fast it's rotating. Okay, now uh, I want to know what the kinetic energy for that is right then, because it's my next step that I'm planning to do, and I'm it's really late and I'm tired, so I think this is the way to do it. But if you come up with a better way, let me know. This way will work. It's just going to be really annoying. Um, if I can find the kinetic energy of the system right when it starts to rotate when it comes up here and it is stopped rotating, that means all the kinetic turned into potential energy and I should be able to find the angle at which that happened. Okay, so kin rotational kinetic energy is I, oh, sorry, forgot the one half. One half I omega squared, okie dokie. So that's going to be, uh, this is my omega, I've got it. I is going to be the rod and pretend the block is a particle. So I is going to be, um, do, 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 do. well, the rod is a rod rotating on its end. So that's one third mass of the rod, uh, radius of the rod squared, oops, no, not ready for that yet, oh, no, too far, plus, and then the block is a particle, so that's going to be mass of the block um, times radius squared, and then I still have my omega.
squared. Okie dokie. So if we go back and look at this rod, I've got um, I've got a length for the rod, I've got a mass for the rod, and the block I, I also have. If I go ahead and just throw all of these numbers in, I think I get, I'm going to put it all on my calculator at once again. Um, okay, point zero six four six eight. Um, let's hope. Again, I'm kind of doing too many things at once in my calculator, but I'm trying. Okay. Okay, so that's my total energy right after the collision. Okay, and since I'm I'm just gonna count that position as potential energy of zero, so we're gonna call that that's our total energy. Okay, of the rotation. So now I gotta figure out, all right, how high does it need to go for, to take like suck up all that rotate that kinetic energy into potential energy? Now we have to think about a little bit of geometry here. So here's the block rod system um, right after the collision. That whole thing's gonna swing up to some angle like this. When that swings up like that, so this is a length, um, this is length L, that's a length L. When that swings up like that, I've basically got, I've got two places to think about, okay? I've got to think about the block. The block swung, just swung right now from here to here. So basically it just gained this, this distance in height. I just need to find out what that is what height that is, like how, how much height it gained, so I can find out how much potential energy it basically sucked up. So if this whole thing was L, then this bit is basically L minus this part that's still black. And that part that's still black is um, adjacent to this angle. The hypotenuse, it makes a triangle with the hypotenuse of L. So if I do a little trig, basically this side would be the hypotenuse times the cosine of that angle. So this purple bit would be L, oh, I should keep it purple, shouldn't I? That would be L minus this side, which is the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle. So that little, that little purple bit is L minus L cosine theta, okay? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull an L out to the front. So it's L times one minus cosine theta like that. Actually, I probably didn't need to pull that. All right, we'll see what it does later. Okay, but I've also got the rod. The rod has mass, so it's going to have potential energy when it swings up. So before, the rod's mass, we could pretend, happened oops, right here in at the center of mass. So when it swung, swings up, it will also happen at the center of mass. And that means that this distance is L over two, so is this, okay? And when that swung up, it swung and gained this amount of height. That amount of height, same kind of trig, except for this time the hypotenuse is L over two and the whole length is L over two. So we end up with the same format where that little length is L over two minus L over two cosine theta, like that. And again, I could pull out the L over 2 to the front if I want, and it'd be get L over 2 times 1 minus cosine theta. Now, what that means is when this thing swung up, over here, the potential energy is the potential energy of the rod and the potential energy of the block. Okay? The potential energy of the block that just got, ch that got uh, changed is the mass uh, is the mass of the rod, which was big M times G, times how much height the rod gained. So the height gained the rod gained this much height. So it gained L over two times one cosine theta. Then the potential energy of the block was, well, it's the mass of the block times G times the height that the block gained. So the black the block gained L times one minus cosine theta. Ooh, I'm running out of room, that's a theta. Okay, and that whole thing needs to equal this up here. So what I really have now, oh, yeah, that all 
equals a 0 0.6 whatever whatever blah 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 okay so if I put all my numbers in lots and lots and lots of numbers and this is where I probably shouldn't have um, gone through all that's left is this cosine theta so I gotta do a whole bunch of algebra and you know what I'm gonna put the numbers in it'll it'll save me on some algebra I'm gonna make this full screen too oh because I already had something over there all right so this ends up being do to do equals I'm gonna go ahead and put all these numbers together and all those numbers together so I just have numbers out in front be a little bit easier to deal with okay so this becomes 0.2 one five six times one minus cosine theta and this becomes interesting it also becomes point oops two one five six that's weird why is that oh notice that's I don't know if this is gonna happen to you okay because mine came out the same because although here this is L over 2 and that's just L my big M is exactly twice my little M okay that is why those came out the same I cannot guarantee that that will happen to everybody's numbers so don't count on it please those might not be the same alright so if I combine some like terms alright these are both, as I, I have a term here, it's 1 minus cosine theta. So I'm going to add those together, and I end up with 0 0.4312 times 1 minus cosine theta. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 0 0.43 blah, 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 blah. Okay, 0 0.06468 divided by that stuff. Okay, I end up with... 0.15 equals 1 minus cosine theta. Therefore, cosine theta, if I rearrange that a little bit, let's see, move that over there and that over there, I end up with cosine theta equals 0.85. At this point, stop, check. Is your number less than 1? because we're about to do an inverse cosine and if you do an inverse cosine with anything greater than one is not gonna work you're gonna get an error but I'm less than one so I'm good I do an inverse cosine of both sides okay and I end up with that theta is the inverse cosine of 0.85 which is inverse cosine 31.788 31.788 degrees, which they rounded up to 31.8, okay? So, wow, that was a really long problem. My counter says that this movie is now 18 minutes and 30 seconds long. I apologize. Ask me any questions about it tomorrow, please.